Hi everyone. I am Dr. Fu from Hanoi Medical University and Bạch Mai Hospital. It is a great honor for me today to present at the Congress of Vietnam Respiratory Society. In my talk, I would like to, in, to present a case report about interventional bronchoscopy to management carrying tracheal stenosis through the tracheostomy. This is a very interesting case, so I hope after this presentation, you will gather a lot of useful and new information. I will start with uh, some background information. Scaring is a benign tracheal stenosis that is a debilitating and potentially life-threatening condition. There are many reasons for this situation, but the main cause are long-term of endotracheal intubation and or tracheostomy, tuberculosis, burn injuries, and secondary healing after surgery or radiation therapy. Until now, we have two options treatment for this disorder. Firstly is surgical resection. It was previously the gold standard method. However, in recent years, interventional bronchoscopy treatments such as balloon dilation, cryotherapy, laser therapy, and silicone stenting have now been widely used to treat the disease, benefiting a large number of patients. Next, I would like to introduce some basic knowledge about rhesus bronchoscopy. This is a procedure used to gain access to the patient airway and allows the passage of larger airway instruments and cameras to diagnose and treat airway disease. You can compare two types of bronchoscopy in the picture below, the rhesus in the left and flexible in the right. This technique can bring some benefits include Airways is secure during the procedure. It allows for laser biopsies, tamponade bleeding areas, removal of airway tumor and foreign objects, deploying airway devices such as tracheal bronchial stands to keep collapsing airways open. This form of bronchoscopy must be done by highly trained specialists because it's a very difficult procedure. And the case I will report today is even more challenged than usual cases. This was a 34-year-old man admitted to the hospital because of this near. He underwent a surgery to treat traumatic brain injury due to traffic accident two months ago. He was intubated and had a tracheostomy for one month in post-operative period. After removing the tracheostomy cannula, the patient often has shortness of breath and stridor. One way before admission, he had severe shortness of breath and we led him to be intubated at local hospital and then transferred to Bạch Mai Hospital. On physical examination, the patient was nephrotic with Glasgow score was 10 points. He on T2 ventilation via endotracheal tube with SpO2 was 95% a 2 lit per minute oxygen. We noted a stridor in structure. Other systems were clinically normal. We also did some past clinical tests and found that there was a stenosis segment in the lower of structure too, with diameter about just 5 mm. Other problem is on the brain. Almost a half of the scan at the right side was removed to reduce the pressure in the brain. Based on this evidence, we diagnosed the patient with scaring tracheal stenosis due to prolonged intubation and postcraniectomy for traumatic brain injury. Making a diagnosis is not a challenge, but the problem is how to treat the patient. As I noted, Above. Until now, we have two options for this disorder. Number one is surgery. With this surgery, the technique is relatively simple and familiar, but the patient has to undergo a major surgery. Or we can do 
interventional bronchoscopy. For that technique is very difficult because of the uh, situation on the brain. However, the patient just needs an intervention with fewer complications. Because of difficult situation, we had to organize a multidisciplinary consultation meeting. After considering all of risks and benefits of each method, the expert council decided to choose option two. So the interventional team of respiratory center, led by Dr. Vu Van Zap, immediately handled the patient on the operating room. And we do some techniques include uh, intubation, electrocautery, and balloon dilation. After that, from a pinhole at the beginning, the tracheal becomes wider. It's enough for the patient to breathe in and out without wheezing. But it was not enough for a long term. And the problem is we have to find a way to prevent the tracheal become stenosis again. And we can do uh, use some methods. You have to use a balloon appropriately during the procedure to avoid mucosa ulcer. You can use cryotherapy, mitomycin C, corticosteroid. But the most important and effective method is airway stenting. Therefore, we decided to place a stand in the narrow postseason. But due to a traumatic brain injury, the patient head could not be moved much. So after several failed attempts with stand placements, we had to find a new approach. We discussed with ENT doctor and immediately their team went to the operating room to do check ostomy for the patient. And then we put the rises bronchoscope through this way. This is very, very rare situation of this procedure. From postseason, we do procedure very smoothly. And here's the reason. The stand is in the right plate, and we can not see any stenosis through the trachea tube. And I just called back for the patient yesterday. He is uh, stable and don't have any wheezing or shortness of breath from the time he came from hospital. You can see the the stand in the trachea. And for conclusion, I would note that interventional bronchoscopy is an efficient and safe modality in post-intubation tracheal stenosis management. In addition to the traditional oral approach, a rising bronchoscope can be placed through the tracheostomy in the specific situation. Thank you for your attention.